I just, you know, say something. Hello, Mark. We're going to talk about covered rooms. <laughs> Getting the seed into the into the planter is uh, we've taken a custom mix that Cisco makes for us, and then I move those mixes when we've got downtime or we're not busy in the pro boxes, and we're using corn and soybean handling equipment then to put the seed into the planter. And so it's a real simple to have one box per mix or multiple boxes per mix and keep things separate. And then I use the same system the corn and soybean guys do. On the outside, so I make sure I get the right one. This is a couple of our black oat mix that we planted previously. Black oats, uh, radishes, and cooked clover. Now we're getting into the maize mix. Black oats take the density. Fifty-six pounds of bushel. Here's the mix we're planting today. This is the main ingredients are spring oats and peas. Then we're also planting hairy vetch, radishes, and Persian clover, which is the smallest seed. That's uh, something brand new. I'm excited to try. The goal of this mix is to fix nitrogen for next year's corn crop. We have a Valmar air box sitting on top of a tillage tool, and this replaces what might more traditionally be planted with a drill. Uh, so instead of dropping seeds into disc openers, we're actually blowing the seeds uh, behind the tillage tool and in front of the harrow. The idea here is that our ripple holders on the disc are gonna work up some nice uh, loose soil, and then we're gonna blow the seed on top of that soil and cover it up with the harrow. It doesn't look like this would do a very good job of planting. Uh, but you'll be surprised when we get started how well it actually does. If we've got some speed, this harrow moves quite a bit of soil. And so we're wanting with most of our forage and cover crop species just to give them a light covering anyway. And this, uh, this tool is really good for planting things at a half inch deep. The way our Valmar air box works is actually very similar to a drill. We've got a fluted wheel that is going to measure seed and spill it into those black holes. The black holes are connected to these uh, uh, rubber hoses that have a stream of air going through them. So the seed's going to fall into a stream of air and get blown back to the back of the tool, uh, which is very similar to a regular drill where uh, a fluted wheel would measure seed out and drop it between disc openers. A very common question I get that's a very uh, germane to this topic of, of today is like how to calibrate your seed drill and it's very tricky it's uh, uh, difficult to do and needs to be done frequently because of uh, what we're actually measuring versus what we want to measure so when we plant a crop of any kind we're actually our actual goal is to have so many thousand plants per acre we turn that into into pounds per acre for when we order seed and, and set things up and then most of our machines like my planter here uh, isn't measuring pounds at all. It's actually converting cubic feet per minute to cubic feet per acre. And so there's a couple different places to get off calibration from whatever your seed rate may imply. The first is the density of the seed. We took a video uh, earlier of measuring the density of the seed, but it's important because oftentimes uh, seed you may think is 60 pounds per bushel uh, may actually be quite a bit more or less than that and it affects the calibration. So we measure it with a simple tool and find out that a mix that, that should be 60 pounds per bushel is actually 56 pounds per bushel. We'll factor that into our equation when we're calculating the seeding rate. The other th reason that we need to check these things on the fly uh, is that some things flow easier than others. So they may weigh the same amount of pounds per cubic foot, 
but something like wheat or cereal rye flows a lot easier than things like buckwheat or oats um, or especially sunflowers and all those change the way they actually come out. Uh, the way that we have uh, measured that prior to this year would be that we would put a test speed in the monitor of our uh, machine to make it think that we've planted uh, a fraction of an acre and then weigh the seed that actually comes out using a kitchen scale. We've gone one step fancier than that this year and actually uh, purchased a set of weigh bars from Scale Tech and placed them underneath our cedar. And so now, uh, going forward, we can constantly weigh the seed box and know at any one moment how much seed we've used. And um, it only takes one or two passes and a couple calibrations to get things really close. Um, total investment to put uh, weigh bars on this, including the labor, was under $3,000. Uh, so I think that the, the period of return is really quick on something like this. Uh, and I'd like to see a lot of our customers adopt this technology to improve their accuracy. There we go. We'll test it. We'll slow down a little bit and speed up. Oh, yeah. There's the speed up. Okay, so we have planted the first acre, and already I can tell that I'm quite a bit off. Uh, so uh, we talked earlier about uh, density being a factor on why calibrations. Uh, seeding rates don't match the chart, but also flowability. Uh, this is the first time I've planted peas with this setup, and I'm guessing that the peas aren't flowing through uh, as easy as other heavy seeded things that we plant. So right now, after 1.1 acres, I can see that the monitor thinks there should be 944 pounds left in the air drill, but we can tell there's actually 955. That's not very far off, but it's actually about 20% considering that we started with 1,000 pounds. So to change this, uh, you could change the rate that you're planting, but I think that it gets really confusing for the operator because then you can't remember if 40 pounds is actually supposed to be 45 pounds or what direction you took it. So I'm going to change the density so that the machine cranks out the seed faster, and I'm going to change it by roughly 20%, which would be 8 pounds. Now the machine thinks that it's 20% less dense, we will try this operation again. Usually after about three calibrations, even when they're off by that much, uh, we can be very accurate. 